So everyone, so here we are, the S1000XR in low suspension model. This one is the TE model, which is uh, touring equipped, I think. That's what it stands for, I think. So it's the TE model. It comes uh, uh, standard with the quick shifter up and down, uh, the uh, top box rack, and obviously the pannier racks are now built in, unlike the previous one where it had uh, uh, scaffolding type um, pannier racks on the old one so this one uh, is obviously the 999 cc derived engine from the s1000 rr except this one hasn't got the shift cam technology and so uh, this one has 162 brake horsepower at 11,000 rpm and 84 pound foot of torque at 9200 uh, which is 114 Newton meters of torque. So in terms of power to weight ratio, I'm just going to give you the figures based on the wet weight of this bike, which is 717 brake horsepower per ton and 371 pound foot of torque per ton. So compared to the, say, the Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX I test road, which has 1043 cc engine, 140 brake horsepower, and 81.9 pound foot of torque so this one has got slightly more torque uh, but at a slightly higher rev range um, but uh, obviously the weight does matter so the ninja 1000 sx weighs in at 235 kg whereas this one weighs in at 226 kg apparently the bmw boffins have reduced the overall weight by nearly 10 kg because they obviously now you don't need to have the scaffolding for the pannier racks so that's reduced weight the engine is also slightly less weight and if you look at the uh, look, look at the exhaust that also uh, is slightly reduced weight the uh, a previous model had a slightly bigger exhaust which I didn't like but this one is slimmer and it really does uh, look nice and that's because obviously the catalytic converter at the bottom has been enlarged to compensate for that uh, and this model obviously as I said comes in uh, with all the riding modes let's see if I can show you so the riding modes are here on this button so at the moment it's set at rain I'm gonna change it when I'm riding to maybe road mode and then it's road dynamic dynamic pro this one comes with dynamic pro as well so um, I'll leave it at, actually I'm going to change it to rain, uh, rain mode for now and then I'll move it and change it. And then obviously you can change your suspension setting through this button. It comes with cruise control, this model obviously. Um, so it's got all the gizmos. Um, I, I haven't got time to go through all the functions of the TFT. I'm sure you can find other YouTube videos out there uh, to show you around because I have only got... Uh, just under an hour to test ride this bike so uh, I hope you found this useful please don't forget to subscribe to my channel I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers uh, so far I've got uh, just over 500 so uh, thank you thank you to all the subscribers so far for your support I really do appreciate it thank you so much guys uh, let's have a quick look at the headlights there LED headlights I'm not too sure if this model comes with the the uh, cornering lights. It might do actually. I, I'm not too sure, but uh, obviously you can spec it up. This model you can spec it, spec it up to uh, how you like it. This is just a quick uh, overview of the bike. Um, as you can see, it's the low suspension version, so they've got a shorter uh, side stand and it's now the seat height is 790 millimeters which is just over 31 inches let's have a look how easy it is to mount the bike and as you can see it's really quite um, easy actually even compared to the f900 xr i test rode um, the uh, standard X, uh, F900 XR with the um, XR with the uh, standard seat height, normal seat height, that was really t quite top-heavy for me. But this one with the low s uh, suspension, 
it doesn't feel as top heavy. Right, let's see if I can uh, move it about. The brakes are really sharp. This is uphill, so I won't be able to push it up because there's slight incline uphill. Right, so here we go. I'm finding it um, awkward to get the uh, gear in neutral. But even with the uh, uh, shorter side stand, it still f uh, leans too far down in my opinion. Look, I don't know why they make it so short. Let's have a quick sound of the engine. Even though it's uh, quite far down the side stand, it's actually easy to get it off its side stand uh, with my short legs. So I'm quite uh, pleasantly surprised actually. And so I don't know if you can see on the other camera, I am with my uh, normal boots on and these pair of boots um, give me about a couple of centimeters on my uh, balls of my feet and nearly an inch on my heels uh, so even with the low suspension and with my boots on I am on the majority of the balls of my feet so that's quite reassuring uh, now let's try and see how I can uh, put it on its center stand so this model being the TE model comes uh, with the center stand wow that was really easy actually I'm, I'm quite impressed wow not bad taking it off again not not uh, very hard at all I'll do it again And um, I mean, obviously, th your weight would count towards it. So if you're a heavier person, it will be much, much easier than me. I only weigh 63 kg. But it's reassuring to know that it's not a big deal to try and put it on the center stand. So now to move it about. on your drive or something I mean these grab rails here really come in handy I mean I'm doing it from the right hand side just for added safety and reassurance because the side stand is down so if I were to drop it it's gonna hopefully go on the side stand So there you go guys. Hello everyone, I'm really sorry I'm having to do a voiceover after the filming. Um, after I got home I realised the camera angle was uh, slightly low and that's because this uh, this is a brand new camera I bought and I hadn't quite set up uh, the, the angle properly but I only found out after I got home so please do bear with me. Um, and continue watching um, and I'm hoping uh, in the next upload I should be able to fix it so sincere apologies for the camera angle uh, please um, continue watching thank you so much for your patience well hello everyone welcome back to my channel and here today I am uh, uh, test riding the S1000 XR the low suspension version obviously <laughs> the, as the title uh, on the video says a short person test ride I'm uh, 5 foot 5 inch tall um, at a stretch I've got 30 inch inseam I wear uh, the boots which give me nearly an inch extra height so this uh, show low suspension version is a uh, 790 millimeter seat height which is just over 31 inches and my immediate impressions are 
compared to some of the other bikes I've test uh, ridden so far it does give me a lot of confidence just by lowering the suspension because I uh, sat on the standard height version of this bike and it really felt so top heavy I struggled to uh, get it off the sides, uh, side stand whereas this one having had it lowered uh, I don't feel the top heaviness as much uh, it's still heavy bike 226 kg so it gives me uh, by lowering it it gives me a lot of confidence actually and obviously this model has got 162 brake horsepower at uh, 11,000 revs and 84 foot-pounds of torque which is 114 Newton meters at 9,200 revs so if I were to make a quick comparison with the uh, Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX that had 140 brake horsepower and 81 just over 81 newton meters of torque so city riding so I'm actually currently in sixth gear and uh, as you can see on the dash it's just over 2000 revs and it's handling so well there I can't feel any uh, hunting or snatchiness so that's really quite reassuring so city riding will be ideal so if I knock it down a gear Oh, the auto blipper is really nice. So I'm now in fifth gear, 34 miles an hour, and just over 2,300 revs. No uh, hunting or snatchiness at all. And obviously, I'm in rain mode at the moment, so it's uh, the throttle response is slightly uh, reduced. So I've now changed it to road mode. and throttle response is slightly sharper and the suspension uh, because it's a uh, semi-active suspension you don't need to do much adjustment if you leave it on auto suspension it does does its things for you and so far uh, you know I don't feel any nasty bumps or even I, actually this surface is uh, fairly smooth which may maybe little bumps here and there but it's handling it really well oh I went over this big bump just now and it handled it really well and tipping into corners it is really reassuring actually Whew. and in fifth gear look I'm do, riding in fifth gear going around these bends it's really reassuring obviously this is downhill so uh, and you get so much feedback from the the tires and the front wheel so the uh, windscreen is adjustable with this uh, little plastic knob really nice going round corners I must say <laughs> that rider there who just waved to me he uh, bought the brand new S1000XR only uh, he said Wednesday I think he said So the windscreen is adjustable through this lever as you can see so it's on its highest setting and I can feel a slight buffeting just above my helmet actually but other than that the wind is uh, deflected really well the vibrations now at 4000 revs in fourth gear I can feel some vibrations through the handlebars and obviously you're not going to leave it at you know fourth gear for long distance so and so maybe slight vibrations through the foot pegs so if I knock it up to fifth gear the vibration lessens slightly obviously the previous model lots of people had complaints of uh, high vibrations through the handlebars 
almost a numb finger type vibration so the BMW engineers obviously have worked on it there's some rubber bushings and stuff fitted on the handlebars risers so that has definitely reduced the I think I haven't test rode the previous one but you know reading and uh, watching other people's comments so the vibrations are not uncomfortable if I knock it up to sixth gear minimal uh, vibrations but they're still there you will you will know they're there so from sixth gear I'm doing just about 50 miles an hour sixth gear roll on let's see yeah I mean it's got plenty of go I'm going to now change the mode to dynamic so it's now in dynamic mode let's see if I can see any difference not noticeable but I think there might be marginal difference between the uh, road and dynamic mode so let's see dynamic pro now change to dynamic pro This one I can only compare it to the Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX and to be honest in terms of uh, routine day-to-day -day riding the Kawasaki and this one in terms of pickup and the way it handles I think they're pretty much the same because uh, you know it feels similar to me than uh, with the uh, Ninja S1000 SX so seating position the seat are obviously uh, the seat is a uh, cupped shape and it kind of holds your buttocks quite comfortably and my knees are at 90 degrees and the foot pegs are just below uh, level with my hips nearly and if you stand up a yeah, fairly comfortable standing position actually and talking about the uh, quick shifter I have to say I am blown away by the uh, quick shifter I thought the triumph quick shifter was impressive this is on another level I must say this is on another level the gear changes are imperceptible just now I from first to second gear I changed up and there's no noticeable jerkiness at all it's just imperceptible gear change third gear nothing no wow it's so impressive i love the quick shifter here it's as impressive if not better than the triumphs quick shifters it seems like i got stuck in a, a bit of traffic jam here And as you downshift, the auto blipper kicks in, which is wonderful to listen to. Ooh. And obviously this model has the uh, auto cancelling indicators, cruise control, all the technology. What I like is there's this uh, really nice cubby hole here. I don't know if you guys see it. It's quite nice. You can leave your credit cards or cash, odds and loose change in here, which is really handy. The quick shifter is just sublime. I'm just joining a short piece of uh, the motorway so here I'm doing 55 miles an hour 4,000 revs in fifth gear and there is uh, noticeable uh, vibrations through the handlebars and some vibrations through the foot pegs and the seat 
Uh, if, you, if I change it to sixth gear, it lessens it a little bit, but the vibrations are still there. Let's see if I can pull away. I mean, this is in dynamic pro, and I pulled away. It was. Uh, I really am uh, comparing it to the S1000, uh, sorry, S uh, Ninja 1000 SX, and it feels exactly the same in terms of pulling away and the power delivery. Um, nowhere as impressive as the uh, KTM 1290 GT. So I've now set the cruise control at 72 miles an hour. Wonderful invention, I say. Really nice. I like it. So the wind buffeting is um, not noticeable at the moment, and I've uh, sat up slightly higher, and it's not bad actually. It's not bad at all. If I lower it, let's see how it feels. Oh yeah, now I can feel quite a lot of buffeting right on my helmet and around my shoulders. If I put it up, yeah, immediately it reduces, reduces that buffeting. And I'm surprised by the seat actually, it does feel fairly comfortable even though I can feel hardly any cushioning on the seat but it doesn't feel bad at all maybe it's because of the shape and it's not pushing me forward like the uh, Ducati um, Multistrada that I test rode that was pushing me forward to the tank so here I'm fairly comfortable actually and obviously this model being a tour touring bike uh, uh, the load carrying capacity the load you can carry uh, has been increased a little bit I think uh, from 216 kg to 224 kg of load carrying capacity on this bike so you know two up touring you shouldn't have any problems at all it will handle it so at around 73 74 miles an hour if you're constantly holding on to the uh, handlebars on very long distance journeys you will uh, get annoyed by the vibrations but other than that you know I haven't got any other issues it's really nice the mirrors have no vibrations at these kind of speeds I haven't noticed any vibrations through the mirrors actually and the handlebars feel really nicely positioned Although I'm feeling, maybe because of my short arms, a slightly uh, canted forward. And I think you can actually adjust these handlebars. Yeah, you can. You can just reposition it a few millimetres to forward or back and up, I think. Yeah. Obviously, uh, with the TFT screen, I think it's, uh, in terms of... Um, TFT screen on motorcycles this is one of the best so my suspension setting is at auto at the moment but you can also change it to dynamic auto blipper as you downshift is just sublime the quick shifter Woo. and the clutch uh, is fairly light it's not as light as the uh, Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX but it's still okay to operate so yeah it's not as light as the uh, Ninja 1000 SX
So at the moment, when I pulled, pulled up to this traffic light, I'm now actually flat-footed on my left foot. And I didn't need to shift my uh, buttocks too far to the left. It kind of came naturally. What do we have here? It's a bit of a jam here, isn't there? Thank you. Thank you very much. What a lovely lady. I just went over some rough uh, bumps and potholes and it handled it really well actually even though it's in dynamic pro mode I'm really impressed with it it's so reassuring taking corners it gives so much feedback really nice quick turns look at this corner it's gives so much confidence as you t t take these tight corners so hello everyone thank you again for uh, sticking uh, with me right till the end in spite of this poor camera angle so sincere apologies again um, so uh, to uh, end this video um, I'd like to give my thanks to all of you again and please please do subscribe even though the camera angle was really poor um, and I hope to see you on the next upload, although I'm not too sure how frequently I can do uploads during the winter months because of the uh, shorter daylight hours and difficulty getting test rides. But I'll do my best. And when there is the uh, next upload, obviously you will know about it. And uh, I hope to see you on the next one. So take care, stay safe. Goodbye for now. Bye.